Hello, I'd like to introduce you to the game Race Your Bets. It's a light, kid-friendly kind of betting game, but with no money or anything like that. All the fun of betting without the gambling. It is currently free to download from my website at storyfeet.com forward slash games list forward slash race your bets or something. Just go to storyfeet.com and you can find it. And you can just print the single sheet of A4 paper and then get a bunch of counters and two dice and you are good to go. So what we have here is a bunch of pieces, the horses on the board here. Now they're going to race down the track as we roll the dice. And the player who puts the most bets on the horse that comes first gets however many points are in the blue ribbon. And whoever puts the most bets on the horse that comes second will get however many points there are in the red ribbon. So note that horse number six is favorite as it has fewer spaces to make his way down than horse number one. Here's how it's going to work. Players are going to take turns to do one of three things. They can either place a bet on a horse, which is to place one of their counters at the end of the track, or they can pass, which is basically to move one of their, their piece one space around on the score track around the outside, or they can cheer for a horse, declare which horse they want to go faster, and that will actually encourage that horse to go faster. After which they roll two dice and move the corresponding horses forward. We're just going to do a quick run through of one phase of the game and by the end of that you'll know how to play the whole game. It's Pink's turn now, we're going to go pink, red, yellow. So Pink is going to make a choice, he's going to decide to place a bet on horse number six. He doesn't have to, he could choose to pass if he wanted and then he rolls the dice here, he's rolled a one and a two. Note I'm always going to read the green dice first, that's why they are two different colours. Um, that way if two horses cross the line at the same time, the green dice is the one who wins. Uh, so red's gonna take a turn, he's gonna place a bet on horse number five. And then he rolls the dice, he's got a four and a six, so those two horses move forward a space. And then it's yellow's turn. Now yellow's thinking six has got some pretty good odds here, so he's gonna place his bet on number six. I'm not gonna do that voice for the entire talk through, but obviously he's rolled the dice and one and two have gone forward again. Now pink doesn't really like the idea of sharing that space with yellow and so what pink is going to do here is he's going to put another counter on you see the player with the most counters on a space when that horse reaches the end is the player who gets the points you don't get more points for having more counters but if you have the most counters you get all of the points if two people have equal they each receive one less point than they would for every other person they're sharing it with and so what red's going to do is he's going to place the bet on horse number one you know he's he's getting closer um, and then horses uh, five and four move forward one space each. So that makes it yellow's turn. And yellow has the same problem as he had before. He doesn't want to lose the, the share to pink. So he's going to just be stuck playing a bit of catch up here, which isn't ideal, but it's kind of his choice. He's looking at six as the most likely. So five and two go forward and it's pink's turn. Pink really wants to have this one all to himself. He could, pink could be placing his counters in other places to try and make other claims, but he's not done that. Two and five go forward. And yellow's kind of in this place. He's like, well, actually other horses are further forward. What's more important to me, keeping on six or perhaps taking a position on, on five who seems more likely to win? Let, let's go with that. And so there we got uh, three and four move forward one space each. And it's Pink's turn, so Pink is actually feeling okay at this point. He could do one of several things, but he decides he's just going to pass. He's just going to move his counter forward one space. You know, that's a point. You can just have a point without betting. Um, but there's more points if you get the end, so that's kind of how that balances. So we've got five and two there. So it's Red's turn. Red's going to try and block out yellow from that space. And if he rolls a five here, yellow won't be able to put one in that space because actually you can't place a counter behind the horse. So we have two and one, that's moved forward. Uh, so yellow really wants to stay involved in this. Um, and he's got a bit of a choice. Does he want to stay on five or six? Well, in this case, it's gonna be on five, I think. So four and four, four has made a pretty big jump to the lead there. Now everyone's starting to consider, should they go for uh, five or hope for six to go? Well, actually, Pink is instead gonna 
cheer for six. So it doesn't matter whether pink rolls six or not, six is gonna move forward at least one space. If he rolls a six, he's gonna move for the roll. If she doesn't roll six, then still goes forward. You only get the cheer bonus if the number isn't rolled on the dice. So it's one and then four, and because pink chose and declared that she was going for six, that means that horse number six also moves forward. That's a cheer. Um, you know, trying to bring that up into a space where it has a chance of winning. Um, and anyone can do that instead of placing a counter or passing. Uh, Red's decided, actually, they think four's got better odds. It's more worth placing a counter on horse number four. And so, uh, and it turned out to be a good move. Two and four have both moved forward. Uh, yellow's turn. Yellow wants to make a claim on that one. So just kind of share the claim on as many horses as they can. Um, so that's three and six move forward. What I tend to do is I'll pull the counter back and move the horse forward. It just keeps it easier to see everything that's on the board. So it's pink's turn again and pink is going to cheer for six again. So this means that you can significantly speed up a horse if you don't want to. So the order is the green dice, the white dice, and then the cheer. The cheer comes last in case, you know, there's an order and they all cross the line at the same time. Uh, Red has decided to pass this turn. He's got bets on all the horses they want and rolls the dice. So that's a uh, six goes forward first and then five. Now, Red could have chosen to cheer. I think Red was, Red was feeling quite confident. And then when that six is rolled, that kind of knocks you back a bit like, oh, oops. But what yellow is going to do instead of passing is he's going to cheer for number four. And that's a pair of sixes, so that's not ideal for number four, but at least he gets his guy forward one space. So now it's Pink's turn, and Pink has a couple of choices. She could either, he could either pass or cheer. He's going to go for cheer, so he just declares to everyone he's cheering for six. Uh, Roll the one. Uh, six moves forward first, crosses the line, and then one also moves forward. Now it's the first guy across the line, so what you need to do it's just move that many spaces forward for pink. It's not shared with yellow because yellow doesn't have as many counters as pink does. So red's got a choice again, and this time red is gonna go for a pass. You know, it's either way, red's gonna do pretty well out of this. So five and one, five goes forward and one goes forward. Um, yellow's gonna pass. Uh, that's a one and a four. So it's Red's turn. Red's going to decide to cheer for number one. Uh, but four crosses the line before one gets to move. So that's four first, then two, and then one would move as well because of the cheer. But four's over the line, so now we have to share the points out. Now horse four came in second, so there's five points to share out. But because they're sharing it between two people, both players get one point less than that five. So that is four points for red and four points for yellow. And that is the end of a complete round of the game. Uh, it's a race to get to the end for the counters around the outside. But what happens now is we just reset all the horses ready for the next race, take off all of the bets, but leave the score counters on the board. And then we play until one of the player counters reaches the finish line around the edge of the board on the score track. Note, you're not allowed to pass over the finish line. You actually have to win at least one bet. This normally takes two or three rounds. It depends how much better one player that does than the other. Uh, for example, if that pair of sixes hadn't been rolled, it's highly likely that pink would have been stuck at the back there. And I just want to show you as well that the entire rules for this game are simple enough that I was able to fit them on the single sheet of card, and so I printed it on the back of the board. I'm aware that's not completely as useful as having that available separately, but you can read through all the rules and I believe they're simple enough you can understand them after reading them just one time. Even so, this video should hopefully clear all of those things up and I hope you enjoy the game. It is currently free to download from my website, storyfeet.com forward slash games list, and then find Race Your Bets in that list. Or look at any of the other games that I've got in that list. They'll all be free and available to print and play until perhaps I manage to get one of them published, in which case, well, I probably will have to take it off the website. So get them while they're hot, as they say, and I'll see you in the next video when I introduce some other games.